You are listening to the 10-Minute Off-Road Podcast, the podcast for the off-roader with the short attention span. Episode 66, Muster Ground Road. Never trust a burrito. They're always spilling the beans. Welcome to the 10-Minute Off-Road Podcast. I'm your host, Nikki G. I'm here to inform, entertain, and delight your ear holes with all things off-road for the next 10 minutes or so. Why 10 minutes? Well, it's about how long I have until they find me. Have something to say? You can contact the 10-Minute Off-Road Podcast through social media direct messaging. Say that 10 times fast. On the Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, and or leave a comment on our YouTube videos through 10-Minute Off-Road Podcast or Nick G, my favorite YouTube channel. You can write the podcast at 10 minute off road at gmail.com. That's one zero minute off road at gmail.com. All one word. No spaces or underscores, please. You can download the 10 minute off road podcast at Apple Podcast, Spotify, Overcast. Yeah, I've never heard of that either. Google Podcast, Castbox. That sounds like some fishing gear. Breaker, which. That kind of reminds me of the old CB days. Pocket Cast, which kind of reminds me of the old Pocket Ronco Pocket Fisherman. Radio Public. And, and of course, Anchor, the wonderful host of this show. All right, welcome to the show. I want to talk this week about uh, Muster Ground Road. It's a trail that I went to about two years ago with some friends. And we, it was, it was kind of a far drive so we drove down there we wheeled for a little bit and then we had to leave to drive home before it got too late but we vowed to return two years later and we did we returned full of camping gear ready to explore ready to spend the night and i gotta tell you we had a good time enjoyed ourselves a little background about muster ground road it's in the jim timmerman National Resort, Natural Resource Area. It's in South Carolina. It's way down in South Carolina where South Carolina, North Carolina, and Georgia kind of meet. It's in that area. Not quite to Georgia, but we were pretty close. The trail's about 13 miles long with five offshoot trails that go down to the lake. And the most interesting scenic thing we saw was uh, we cross over a bridge over the river that's made out of some railroad tanker cars or uh, one website said they were made out of old boilers like steam engine boilers but who who knows they're big round they all, I would almost say they're like uh, railroad tanker cars but it was a very interesting bridge to go over very scenic and I would like that the whole trail you're pretty much running alongside Lake Jocasey, but you're right on the edge of it, but you're up about 100 feet, so you're looking down at the lake. And in some places, you might be a little bit higher. Uh, I didn't realize how high above the lake we were until I saw a boat on the lake, and then that kind of put it into perspective. And uh, Lake Jocasey is the purest lake in South Carolina. What they mean by pure, I don't know. But it it did it it was a beautiful blue clear water. It it was very very scenic and I enjoyed it. Or as I said earlier, we uh, camped at on Muster Ground Road. Uh, we weren't sure what the campsite situations were. The, the information on this place is very vague. It's very hard to find any information other than where it's at. So we headed down there. We didn't know if we were going to find a campsite or not, but we knew we would. Sp- spend the night somewhere and uh, there's state parks and all kinds of places in that area we kind of thought we we knew we'd find a place to stop going down muster ground road we come across uh, designated campsites and they were clearly marked with hunt camp we found hunt camp four hunt camp five and hunt camp six now, you'd think they would be in order, but we came across Hunt Camp 4 first, then Hunt Camp 6, and then lastly, Hunt Camp 5. Never did see Hunt Camp 1, 2, or 3. I did see two places 
that were not designated as campgrounds that you could that were perfect campsites, but they they weren't designated. And I'm pretty sure that uh, you could camp there, and as long as you're being cool, no one's going to throw you out. It's not a federal park. It's uh, I don't even get state owned. I think it's owned by Duke Power, which is our electric company here in North South Carolina. So uh, I guess the sheriff's department would patrol that, but I've, I've never seen law enforcement anywhere the whole weekend we were there, and I don't think they patrol it. I, I think as long as you're camping respectfully, no one's going to throw you out of a unregistered campsite. Did see a few hunters. It is uh, a wildlife management area. So uh, we did see a couple of hunters. I don't know what was in season this time of year. I think it's bow season for deer still. And uh, somebody said it was bear season in South Carolina. And I'm not too sure of the bear population in there. Uh, all I saw was a uh, thousand and one squirrels. If you want a bag of squirrel, that, that that's the place to go. And on the way out, we saw two turkeys. But other than that, and I'm sure there's deer in there. There's deer everywhere. Probably coyotes and other stuff. But as far as like big cats and bears or any like really dangerous animals, I, I didn't see anything. I guess they can be there. But uh, how dense of a population, who knows? Use common sense if you're camping. You know, I think I talked about it in my last podcast. You know, no food in your tent because you don't want to track the bear to a tent uh secure your food i know i'm guilty of that i don't i i very rarely hang my food up uh i keep it in my vehicle <laughs> and i figure if a bear is going to come into camp and start messing with my vehicle i could scare him off pretty easy before he gets in there and does any damage and i, I drive a 96 cherokee so if a bear gets in there and shits i it, i don't think y'all notice i to talk about the firewood situation. If you go to Mustard Ground Road and camp, do yourself a favor. Don't bring firewood. Bring a saw. There was so much deadfall in this place. And a lot of it was leaning over the roads uh, every which way. As a matter of fact, when we stopped at uh, Hunt Camp 5 is where we spent the night, there was uh, two widow makers right there in the campsite. It was a nice big campsite, but we were very limited about where we could set our set our tents up and everything because of all the hanging branches and trees. So uh, don't bring firewood. Bring a saw. You're doing everybody a favor and doing yourself a favor by cleaning up some logs. And believe me, you won't have to look far to find deadfall. It is everywhere out there. Uh, we, we've mentioned before to ourselves that man a controlled burn would be great here but it's a wildlife area so they probably don't want to scare the game off so uh that's why i guess they don't do a controlled burn and that's why there's just firewood stacked up everywhere there are a lot of trees leaning across the trail that made well i won't say a lot but a few that made uh very very tall vehicles hard to get through we had a guy with a jeep and he had a rooftop tent on top, and then he had some crossbars on his rooftop tent in case he wants to put a kayak or a Everett, just tie anything on top of his rooftop tent. And the bars on his rooftop tent caught on a tree. It was difficult, but, you know, we got through it. And then on the way out, he just kind of powered through it. But no damage to the vehicle. A little minor scrape on the tree. But, uh, yeah, you know, if we had... a well, we did have a saw, but if we had time or anything, we really could have cut that down and just did away with it for everybody. So be be prepared. The trail may be blocked by trees. Matter of fact, the first time we went there a few years ago, the trail was blocked by, by deadfall on the tree. And uh, we had to cut it and move it out of the way. So that's, yeah, ex expect deadfall. And along with deadfall, trail is kind of narrow it's kind of overgrown i guess a whole lot of people don't go down it so uh you're gonna get pinstriping there's branches and stuff leaning into the trail and if that bothers you uh don't go down there or just when the trail starts to get narrow just cut some branches back that's about all the written information i dug up so in review muster ground road 
It's, an old, it's on the west side of Lake Jocasey. Uh, horse pasture roads on the east side. We've done that before too. And that was a good trip. So uh, been on both sides of the lake. And I got to say, they're both uh, very different kind of trails. If you're going for technical wheeling, you're not going to find it. I did this whole weekend in two-wheel drive. Uh, we had a guy with us that had a uh, Subaru Impreza, whatever, however you want to say it. It's the car-like Subaru. Now, he did have it modified. He had a lift on it. He had some bigger tires. And uh, he knew how to wheel. But he made it through with just some light rubbing and scraping. No no body damage. So it's 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 a nice, easy trail to cut your teeth on if you just want to get out and uh, just go to some place you've never been before. The, there's waterfalls there. The short hike to uh i'm not into the whole hiking thing anymore and we just we just drove through without seeing it but but there are some waterfalls to see and there are some hiking trails and i recommend go see it decide for yourself whether you like it or not you got nothing to lose you know a day in the woods is never a bad thing all right so i rambled on long enough until next time, this is Nikki G saying, wheel what you got and be happy.